inviting us to talk to you today about trauma and how it affects kids. My name is Cheryl Mills, and I'm the uh, co-founder and president of Halen House, and this is uh, my cohort, Maria Cookson. We pretty much run the whole ship, <laughs> so um, we're small, but uh, hopefully mighty. Um, so trauma and kids, how trauma affects kids and what you can do to help. We always have to put out a warning when we talk about trauma because any unresolved trauma or even trauma that you've worked with at some point could be triggered at any time by something that you hear, um, something that you smell or taste or, or just are reminded about. So if I do happen to say something that triggers you, be sure to just notice that you're feeling uncomfortable and maybe make sure that you feel your feet on the floor, look around the room so you can orient yourself into the space, um, breathe, try to breathe. And if it's particularly disturbing or upsetting, feel free to get yourself some space by you know maybe leaving the room. So, um, hopefully it, it won't happen that way, but we always have to you know, put that little disclaimer out there. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is tell you a little story, very briefly. It's called Upstream Downstream, a contemporary fable. It was many years ago that the villagers of Downstream recall spotting the first body in the river. Some old timers remember how Spartan were the facilities and procedures for managing that sort of thing. Sometimes they say it would take hours to pull 10 people from the river, and even then, only a few would survive. Though the number of victims in the river has increased greatly in recent years, the good folks of Downstream have responded admirably to the challenge. Their rescue system is clearly second to none. Most people discovered in the swirling waters are reached within 20 minutes, many less than 10. Only a small number drown each day before help arrives. A big improvement from the way it used to be. Talk to the people of downstream and they'll speak with pride about the new hospital by the edge of the waters. The flotilla of rescue boats, ready for service at a moment's notice. The comprehensive health plans for coordinating all the manpower involved. And the large numbers of highly trained and dedicated swimmers always ready to risk their lives to save the victims from the raging currents. Sure, it costs a lot to downstreamers. What else can decent people do except to provide whatever is necessary when human lives are at stake? Oh, a few people in downstream have raised the question now and again, but most folks show little interest in what's happening upstream. It seems there's so much to do to help those in the river that nobody's got time to check how all those bodies are getting in there in the first place. That's the way things are sometimes. We believe that upstream, how the bodies are getting into the river, is trauma. And downstream, the bodies in the river represent a variety of our society's ills. Addictions, suicide, child abuse, incarceration, gangs, teen pregnancy, disease, poverty, chronic illness, domestic abuse, elder abuse, smoking, alcoholism, eating disorders, diabetes, heart disease, learning disabilities, human trafficking, PTSD, complex PTSD, emotional abuse, ADD, ADHD, anxiety, depression, relationship problems, cancer, memory loss, school shootings, pedophilia, incest, rape, and more. So who's Halen House? Our mission is to provide education, tools, resources, and support for healing the root cause, the upstream cause and effects of Trump. We know how the bodies are getting into the water in the first place. We're inspired by our vision of a society that is trauma-free, healthy, resilient, and whole, where people are interconnected with nature, self-aware, self-regulated, <coughs> relationally attuned, present, and capable of processing life's experience with confidence, skill, and equanimity. 
So what is trauma? Um, typically when you hear trauma, people think of war, accidents, things like that, and they are traumatic. Um, and trauma is the response to a deeply distressing or disturbing event or a series of event, events that overwhelms um, a person's nervous system and their ability to cope with what happened. So whether it's a one-time or ongoing events, it can diminish a person's ability to have healthy emotions and experiences. So even physically traumatic events have a psychological or emotional component. Other aspects of trauma, there's an element of inescapability to events or experiences that are traumatic. Um, the person has no control, there's no way to get away from whatever is going on. Trauma is personal. Uh, trauma doesn't affect two people the same way. Uh, the sympathetic nervous system is, um, stays activated, and that's the fight, flight, or freeze system. And for people who have been traumatized, it can stay kind of on, or in the on position, for days, months, or years. Unresolved trauma may be triggered at any time, the, the warning that I gave you earlier. Uh, research shows that unresolved trauma leads to maladaptive coping strategies, poor health outcomes, and shorter lifespans. So types of trauma, bullying, community violence, complex trauma, disasters, early childhood trauma, intimate partner violence, medical trauma, physical, emotional, and sexual abuse, sex trafficking, terrorism and violence, traumatic grief, secondary and vicarious trauma, which are trauma that um, uh, care <coughs> providers and service providers uh, typically experience just by being exposed to people who are going through trauma, hearing their stories. Um, intergenerational. Um, research has recently shown that trauma can be passed down through the genes. Um, and shock trauma. So when a, a care provider or service provider is working with someone and they're experiencing secondary or vicarious trauma, it can change their view of the world. It can make them, with, they're not experiencing their trauma, they're listening to someone else's, but they can, they can start to be hypervigilant, like a person who has suffered from trauma. Um, they can be fearful, they can be, um, they can start addictions, they can um, uh, feel guilty, um, they minimize, um, problems. Um, so there, there's a lot of things that can really change for them just by hearing about trauma. Uh, some of the trauma by the numbers, um, the social, environmental, and humanitarian prevalence and economic impacts of trauma. Abuse, child development, <coughs> Um, during child development, children who grow up in abusive households have difficulty with um, education. Learning disabilities um, can be associated with trauma. Relationships um, are impacted. Employment, um, they can have uh, a more difficult time finding or keeping a job. Um, social uh, can lead to homelessness, poverty, and unemployment. Uh, the criminal justice system is full of um, people who have experienced trauma. Medical, um, up to 80% of visits to a physician, an MD, are actually related to mental or emotional issues. Um, substance abuse, of course, um, psychological problems, PTSD, stress, anxiety, depression, um, cognitive function, and longevity, a 20 year lower life um, span. Taxpayers in the United States pay $458 billion a year to treat the effects of trauma. Uh, the estimated cost of child abuse and neglect is $592 billion um, over the lifetime. One in five Americans are diagnosed with mental illness in any given year. 
Suicide is the second most common cause of death in the United States for youth aged 15 to 24. It kills over 800,000 people a year globally and 48,300 in the United States. And the autoimmunity epidemic, which can also be traced to trauma, affects 24 million people in the United States. So trauma, uh, this is the trauma wheel that we came up with. Trauma affects our emotional, mental, physical, nutritional, social, and spiritual health. Just all of us. Um, particularly for the little ones. The, the ages between zero and six are critically, critically important for them. Um, abuse that happens or neglect that happens during that time um, has lifetime consequences. Um, children are especially vulnerable. Um, it used to be that we would think if, if, if a little kid got uh, traumatized or experienced something that was very um, difficult, that they were fine, that they, they're resilient, they're little, they're not going to remember it. That's not true. They are absolutely affected by things that go on in their environment. Um, so the health of the caretakers is really critical. Who is that caretaker that is taking care of these kids? Abuse happens in foster homes. Abuse happens, you know, with neighbors. You know, it's not just the parents. Um, so adults who have unresolved trauma inadvertently can traumatize their kids. So for, um, John Hackman said, for every dollar spent on early childhood intervention, teaching someone how to be with kids, seven dollars is saved in the kids not going to jail, not being arrested, not becoming drug addicts, being able to get jobs, pay taxes, etc. This is the single most effective mental health intervention known to mankind. <coughs> By helping the mom, you secondarily help the kid. And how do we know this? Um, there was something called the ACEs study a while back. Anybody familiar with the ACEs study? A few people. Um, the ACEs stands for Adverse Childhood Experiences. It was conducted by Kaiser Permanente back in the late 90s. Um, with 17,000 participants, there are 10 questions. They're just yes or no questions, and they're answered. Um, did any of these incidents happen with you before the age of 18? The questions include emotional, physical, or sexual abuse, incarceration of a family member, mental illness in the family, emotional or physical <coughs> neglect, domestic violence, substance abuse, parents living apart or divorced. And the ACE study found a direct link between childhood trauma and adult onset of chronic disease, incarceration, and employment challenges. Um, so the higher number of ACEs, the greater incidence of negative outcomes. You can take the survey. I'm not going to read the questions to you because they can be triggering. But um, I have a handout here, so there's a link if you'd like to take that for yourself. Or I have a book um, that has the questions in it if you want to look at them. Um, the book was written by, it's called What Happened to You. It's written by Bruce Perry. Um, who is a child, um, child development expert, uh, and he has done some amazing work. That's a really good book. Um, early adversity has lasting impacts. Um, early or uh, adverse childhood experiences can include injuries um, and uh, problems with depression, anxiety, uh, unintended pregnancies. Um, pregnancy complications and fetal death, um, infections, HIV, sexually transmitted diseases, cancer, diabetes, alcohol and drug use, and safe, unsafe sex, and education and occupational challenges. So people with ACEs of, ACE scores of four or more before the age of 18 are seven times more likely to become an alcoholic, 12 times more likely to commit suicide, twice as likely to develop cancer, and people with six or more ACEs can have a 20-year shorter lifespan. 64% of people who are incarcerated have ACE scores of six or higher. 
and 98% have at least one. Um, estimates for the United States population are is that about 70% of the U.S. population has at least one, and I would argue that's a lot higher because a lot of people just don't want to talk about it. They don't want to admit it. So, um, so heart disease uh, for people who have four or more ACEs increases uh, the chances increase for by 240%, cancer 190%. Drug abuse, 1,030%. Stroke, 240%. Diabetes, 160%. Suicide attempts, 1,120%. Obesity, 160%. And depression, 460%. Specific childhood effects, um, students, studies report that between 75 and 93% of the youth entering the juvenile justice system annually are estimated to have experienced some degree of traumatic victimization, and I would argue that it's probably fairly high. Incarcerated women are almost twice as likely to report a history of childhood sexual or physical abuse compared with those not incarcerated. Almost half of those pregnant as a teenager have a history of childhood sexual abuse. Um, a study of individuals in an independent alcohol detoxification unit found 81% of women and 69% of men disclosed a history of sexual and or physical abuse. Um, a study of obese patients participating in a weight loss program found that 55% acknowledged some form of childhood sexual abuse. People who experience violence as children, including physical and sexual abuse, are more likely to drop out of high school. Girls by 24% and boys by 26%. Between 66 and 90% of women in the sex industry were sexually abused as children. Trauma affects your brain development um, so that the actual physical structures of the brain can be altered. Um, stress impacts the executive functioning part of the brain. So during stress or trauma, the ability to think clearly disappears. Your, your brain is hijacked by the amygdala or the survival unit. Um, and traumatic events create fragmented memories. <coughs> the kids are not all right. Um, childhood trauma, two times more likely to develop depression, three times more likely to develop anxiety disorders. Long-term impacts, they, it affects their perception of reality, wires the brain to expect danger, so they wander around constantly in fear and distrustful of people. Um, the fight, flight, or freeze response is always on, uh, can create relationship problems, it takes away their sense of safety, um, increases the stress hormones or cortisol running through your body, and when that's continual, that helps break down your, um, your, your health. Uh, it creates a sense of helplessness and it results in serious behavior problems. So, children in school, for example, who um, are having a difficult time or are acting out um, could very well be reacting to something from home. It's not that they're a bad kid. Um, they may be dealing with a lot of stuff that we're not aware of. A traumatized brain is bottom heavy. Again, the amygdala is, is overactivated and it's in charge. The prefrontal cortex or the thinking center is offline, um, which affects uh, concentration and learning. And the uh, anterior cingulate, cor cingulate cortex, the emotional regulation center, is underactivated. So kids have difficulty managing and or naming emotions. I read an article just recently that said that alexithemia, which is the inability to recognize or describe your own emotions, how you feel, um, is related to trauma. The Body Keeps the Score. This book is, um, was written by Dr. <coughs> Dr. Bessel van der Kolk. Um, he's, been, um, he's been at this for about 30 years. And he talks about the fact that um, when we experience a traumatic uh, event, our brain tries to forget it, 
but our bodies don't forget. That's how when um, you know you read something or you smell something or you hear something, you can still be triggered back to back to that event by that sensory input. Our senses can bring what we thought was forgotten trauma back to front and center. Um, trauma literally reshapes both the body and the brain, compromising, compromising the sufferer's capacities for pleasure, engagement, self-control, self and trust. And he said, how people gain control, how can people gain control over the residues of past trauma and return to being masters of their own ship? Talking, understanding, and human connection can help, and drugs can dampen the hyperactive alarm systems. But the imprints from the past can be transformed by having physical experiences that directly contradict the helplessness, rage, and collapse that are part of trauma, and thereby regaining self-mastery. So there's no one way to heal trauma. People are all different, and what works for them will be different. Um, usually a combination of modalities um, help move people along that healing path. So uh, traditionally we think of therapy, um, which can be incredibly, incredibly helpful. Um, I would caution though that before uh, you encourage someone to go into therapy for trauma, that they find a therapist that is trauma informed. Um, even well-meaning therapists can re-traumatize someone if they don't have an understanding of how trauma affects people. Um, medication can be helpful, like Bessel said, in terms to, you know, just to tamp down the reactive part of themselves. <coughs> but, um, and Halen House, we uh, focus a little bit more on other therapies um, that are readily available here that can help also you know, build that ability to heal. Things like getting out into nature. We are in a perfect environment um, for people to just get out into nature. It is very healing. Uh, mindfulness and meditation, that's something that I teach. Um, it helps to bring that uh, executive functioning back online and to relax and regulate the nervous system which um, is triggered during trauma. Creative pursuit, pursuits, Maria is uh, an artist, and um, things like art, drawing, uh, drama therapy, um, writing can be also very uh, therapeutic and healing. Movement, anything that's uh, ryth rhythmically um, uh, moving the body, things like uh, yoga, qigong, tai chi, dancing, walking, um, exercising, playing, sports. Um, having a healthy diet is really, really critical. Um, and we know it's difficult sometimes for people who have been traumatized or are living you know, on a shoestring to have a healthy diet. Um, social connection is really critical, not feeling like you're alone. And we know from all of this, all these numbers here that people who have experienced trauma are not alone, even if they feel like what they've experienced is unique to them. Um, there are others who have been through the same thing. Um, other complementary and alternative modalities that are really helpful are things called um, EMDR, which is um, eye, um, um, eye movement desensitization reprocessing. It has to be done with a therapist. Um, and it is very effective with uh, PTSD, treating PTSD. Uh, tapping, which is, um, utilizes um, emotional release. Acu uh, acupressure points in the body, uh, somatic experiencing, massage can be helpful, energy medicine, um, things like pet therapy can be helpful too. So um, there is a lot there are a lot of different things out there that can be helpful. So if you happen to know somebody who says, well, I've tried therapy, that didn't work. I've tried, you know, I went to the doctor, that didn't work. Uh, the doctor was, you know, even more traumatizing. Then, you know, there are other things that can help. And there's a lot of things that people don't realize or maybe they're 
it seems kind of maybe a little on the edge or just not something that we've thought is um, really a rebalancing and, and a way to let your emotions and, and the experiences so you can transform them. So there's a lot of things that happen that we can do in life and there's many, many different practitioners here that are you said, you know, it's important to find an informed, a trauma-informed mm -hmm. therapist. How do you find people? One really good resource is called Psychology Today. Okay. Um, most therapists that I know are listed on that, and you can actually search um, for someone who has experience working with people who have had trauma. Same people who do the magazine? Yes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, it's a, it's a really good resource. Um, and finding a therapist it can be a challenge too because there are a lot more people in therapy these days than there used to be. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of um, therapists who have waiting lists. Don't so, you do seminars and stuff that they hear? So mm -hmm, do, mm -hmm. uh, who are those for? Are those for Anybody. family or? Yeah, they're, yeah. For, they're for anyone who wants to learn about a different modality and different mm -hmm. ways to heal. And to introduce you to you know, people in the community that can right. help. Okay. Um, so how can you help? Reframe your thinking from when you experience someone who's maybe having a particularly bad day from what's wrong with you to what happened to you. Particularly if they are someone who is in a perpetual bad state. We never know what's going on with anybody. So maybe cut them a little bit of slack. Uh, be trauma-informed, understanding trauma and its impact, um, the importance of safety, choice, sovereignty, and empowerment, all of those things that were taken away from a person who was traumatized. Understand that the majority of our society's skills are trauma-related. We use Band-Aids over symptoms a lot of the time, so we are interested in healing that root cause. You know, How do we work with the children and the parents at the same time? Um, so that we don't continue to perpetuate uh, the abuse and neglect that happens in the, in the family. Um, support parents, caregiver, caregivers, and service providers. They need to take care of themselves in order to take care of others. So encourage, you know, if you know people who are nurses, doctors, emergency responders, uh, search and rescue, or whoever, um, Find out how they are and how they're taking care of themselves because, again, they can be traumatized just by the work that they do. Um, and we're, and we're, you know, our society has been real good at being go, 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 and then just push through. And it's important to take time and take moments and then and kind of have a downtime and then reflect and then and kind of be curious about things. And so if there's something that is either triggering you or somebody around you or a kid, you know, there, there might be, I mean, there's more than likely something else going on, you know. Um, support organizations that, help, that support helping kids, uh, like the Friends of the Children. Uh, we went out there with the chamber a couple of weeks ago, and the director said $970,000 is saved per child mentored in that program, keeping them out of the juvenile justice system and addiction and all that. Uh, Mountain Star Nursery is one local um, here that works with kids, um, Remote Trails and the Kids Center, and, and there are so many good organizations that help children and parents. Um, so, and you can also be informed, be patient, be compassionate, be present be connected, and be quiet. Sometimes people just want to be listened to. So thank you. Yes? If I have a, a neighbor who's got a six-year-old kid who I think has had a traumatic experience and I call you, what would you do? What would we do? Um, we would try to get more information and see where the best um, place to intervene would be. Uh, you know, yeah, if, the clearing if, house to try to get yeah, the North you, Star. Or, yeah, if you think that kid is being physically harmed, 
you know, you probably, you may need to call, you know, yeah, you call the police. Yeah. Um, but if it's something that you're really not sure about, then, you know, maybe maybe somebody with the county that, that would need to step in and investigate. Um, if it's something more like, this kid's left alone all the time, you know, maybe we could point you towards uh, programs that the kid could be involved with. That you might don't help. provide the program, you, you act again at the we do some. We do some programs, um, but we don't have a location right now. So in the meantime, we're gonna point you towards um, something that could potentially help that kid and or the parent. Yeah. And we, and we do have, um, we've done educational talks of some of the different areas and some of the modalities and things that can help children and um, adults. So we have that as a resource on our website. And, but we, we wanna, we're, 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 we're small and we're growing, so we're starting to have some programs, but we're, we want to make the connections because there is so many um, opportunities that people don't all really know. So, um, so that's kind of work. We would, especially with something with a child, we want, we want to make sure that we get, it to, get to the right area. Yeah, any other questions? Yeah. Is there a role for um, substances such as um, psilocybin and ketamine for trauma, mm -hmm. specifically for trauma? Yeah, yeah, I think there really is. Um, they've done research on that. It can, um, it can be very effective for people who are suffering with uh, traumatic events. Uh, to my understanding, I think it helps to uh, break the connection between the event and the emotional memory. So, um, and people can remember trauma and not be as activated by it um, with a lot of help. Um, for me, and doing my mindfulness and meditation, I was able to do that for myself, um, doing some other things, but remembering a traumatic event and being able to talk about it um, without you know, completely falling apart um, is part of that uh, ability, that healing process is, is that is something that's in the past and it doesn't need to um, continually affect your life. So that's what a lot of these modalities do is that they help break that connection. Um, because you're between the actual event. Yeah, because uh, you're your primal part of the brain is, and especially if you're having more than one traumatic event, um, that's part of the complex trauma and, and like what they call little T's. So we'll have things that build up on us. And it may not, you know, you may go several times and it may, you know, you don't have a reaction to it or whatever. And then all of a sudden, you're either sensitized or you're through that experience again and all of a sudden you just fall apart or you know have some start doing some addiction or whatever and that's you're just trying to cope you're trying to survive so um, your brain but your brain just thinks as they say the tiger is right here and so that's our brain has done a really good job and but a lot of the times we're not there isn't a tiger, or or there's ways, even if you are in some kind of a harm's way, that there are, are, are ways to have um, sovereignty and have your power back. And that's usually what happens is we feel like we have no power over anything, and we feel like we can't do anything, and it's our fault when it's something that happened to us, not because we were a bad person kid or adult and so it's it's working through that and and when you are able to make these little hit work in different areas um, you can transform that and then like and, and voice it is a big thing so then you can say this is just a story and, and it is something that happened to me at this point in time but yeah thank you very much uh -huh. thank you Oh, and it's
if anybody wants a list of resources, I have a few things up here. You're welcome to take a sheet. Yeah. Books, uh, things. Yeah. And, then we, and then we have <coughs> this uh, some handouts in the directory of them. Um, oh. We will need to cool. uh, All right.